All right. Howdy, everybody. It's Miss Kosh. Um, this is for both IB and Preco. Um, I just want to do a quick reminder of all things right triangles. Everything, well, everything you learned in geometry. It's not quite all things right triangles, but the new stuff I will teach you in a different video. So um, the first part, Pythagorean theorem. Um, you may know, hopefully you know, that the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c has to be the hypotenuse. Okay, so when would we use the Pythagorean theorem? When we know two side lengths and we're looking for the third. So, um, we want, we're looking for sides. Um, I don't know, however you want to write that. We know two of them, we're looking for the third. Um, you know what, I don't know that I want to write that, but you come up with a way to describe that. Um, how do we use Pythagorean theorem? Um, well, we've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in this first example, this becomes 3 squared plus 9 squared equals x squared. So that's 9 plus 81 equals x squared. This is 90 is equal to x squared. Now we do square root, square root plus minus. However, we're not going to say, um, we would say square root, square root, plus minus, except when we're talking side lengths of a triangle, we don't want the minus. So we only want the positive one in that. So let's just ignore that um, in this context. So keep in mind root 90. If I look at this, let's go ahead and clean this up. I know 3 goes in here 30, and then 3 goes in there 10, and then 10 is 2 and 5. When I used to teach Algebra 1 years and years ago, I would say, if you have a date, then you get to go out. If you don't have a date, you stay home under the radical. These two had a date, so this is 3 root 10 is equal to x. I prefer this value. Okay, um, This is the exact value. The approximation is what you would tell the guy at the hardware store. So if I go in and say, yeah, I'd like you to cut me a piece of, of 2 by 4 that is 3 root 10 feet long, they're going to think I'm absolutely crazy. So when I go to my calculator and I say, um, I had to pick my calculator up, 3 root 10, they, and then fraction to decimal, the approximate would be, um, it's approximately, was that notation is 9.487 or something like that. Okay, so that's how we would write that. I prefer exact. Um, math likes to think in terms of exact things. Our engineers and construction workers and all that kind of stuff, they would live in the world of the approximate. So I prefer the exact. Okay, next one. Um, on this one, so notice this first one, I had you do two examples because... Um, one of them you were looking for the hypotenuse, the other one you're looking for a leg. So that could be either A or B, it doesn't matter. And I have 5 squared plus x squared equals 6 squared. So 25 plus x squared equals 36. x squared is equal to 11. x is equal to the square root of 11. Okay, so... Um, Next, oh, and the other thing I want to talk about is the triples. So it is helpful to know there are certain values that give you a right triangle. Um, if I have 3, 4, and the hypotenuse is 5, or 5, 12, and the hypotenuse is 13, um, 8, 15, and the hypotenuse is 17, 7, 24, 25. When I used to teach geometry, um, I've made my kids memorize this, and the very first year I taught geometry, Liz Davis, I don't know where she is now, but Liz Davis put that to a song, and she would sing 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, 25, and that would help them, help, they had to know all those triples. So if you would see a triangle, well, if you saw a triangle that did this and said, um, this is 70 and this is 240, well then this is a 7 times 10 and this is a 24 times 10, and therefore 7, 24, 25 times 10, this side here would be 250. And so that just helps you do those problems a lot faster. Okay, um, next we have our special right triangles, and so the first of the special right triangles is the 45, 45, 90. So when do we use 45, 45, 90? Well, when it's a isosceles right triangle, or if you have, sometimes you'll see a square, pretend it's a square, um, if I have a square, the diagonal here becomes makes this a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And so that's when we would want to consider that. You can't just use 45, 45, 90 just because you feel like it. Um, you have to know that those angles are, it, you have to know it's isosceles and a right triangle or that those are 45 degree angles. Same, same, same idea. So notice it, the 
the expression, what we have here, if this side length is a and this side length is a, then we know we can use Pythagorean theorem and say a squared plus a squared is equal to x squared, calling the hypotenuse here x. So this is 2, a squared equals x squared. So now I take the square root of both sides, and I have root 2, and I have the square root of a squared. So I'm going to just say a. Um, when I take the square root of both sides, did that make sense what I did there? I hope it does. We have the root 2, and then the square root of a squared is a. Um, and so what I'll do sometimes is set up a ratio. Um, actually, I want blue again. Um, so if I'm looking at this one, I would say, okay, well, I can draw my little... Um, 45, 45, 90, I have a, a, a root 2, or s, s, s root 2, or x, x, x root 2, however you want to do that. But I can say a is to x as a root 2 is to 15. So I'm using similar triangles, so a, um, or actually, no, that's not what we would do. We would, I forgot, we would say, um, we would say 1, 1 root 2. Um, and so we'd say 1 is to x as root 2, um, or x is to 1 as 15 is to root 2. And so now we know x is equal to 15 over root 2. If I were going to, these we're going to rationalize the denominator. We don't always rationalize the denominator, but we do with this. So this becomes 15 root 2 over 2 as both x and y, since they're equivalent since it's isosceles. So um, how do we use it? Yes, that, that scenario, you can set up a, a similar triangle, 1, 1, root 2. You can do whatever you learned in geometry. I'm just trying to help you um, to go from here. So on this one, now we can say, I want yellow. This is to this. So root 10 is to 1 as y is to root 2. Okay, um, or however you want to set up that ratio. And so what I notice, if I solve for y, I need to multiply both sides by root 2. So that's root 20 is equal to y. Let's go ahead and clean that up. I see 4 times 5, square root of 4 is 2. So this is 2 root 5 is equal to y. Okay, hopefully that was a good little reminder for you. Let's continue on. So we have 30, 60, 90. Okay, what happens with 30, 60, 90, you, I, one of the biggest problems I see in pre-cal and IB is that people will see a triangle and think, oh, it's 30, 60, 90. I'm like, well, slow your roll. It's not always, it's not always 30, 60, 90. You've got to check and make sure. So um, we come up with this. If I have an equilateral triangle, um, and let's say I, I decide that each side is, has a length of 2A. Well, I can drop in the altitude... And that will also divide that opposite side. So this side right here is A. So now I want to solve for this little piece, X. I want to solve for that altitude. And I can go back to Pythagorean theorem. X squared plus A squared equals 2A squared. Is that hypotenuse? Can y'all see this lovely little right triangle that I'm looking at? That's the lovely little right triangle. Okay, um, so now X squared is equal to... Oh, hang on, not yet. I'll show you everything I'm doing. 2 squared is 4, a squared is a squared, and now I have x squared is equal to 3a squared. When I subtract away one of it, I have 4a squareds, and I subtract away one, now I have three of them. And now x is equal to the square root of 3 times the square root of a squared, which I don't know why I wrote it that way. I typically write a root 3. Okay, and so what I'll do when I go to work one of these problems is I would, I'll, I'll draw a little triangle that matches the one that they gave me, this is the 30 degree angle, and I'll say 1, root 3, and 2. Notice we had that, that sort of a ratio here, a, um, a root 3, and then 2a. So now, when solving this first one, they gave me, well, a few ways to think about it. I can set up the proportion, or the, the ratios, like I did up here. Or I can say, well, this one, this 14 is twice as big as, the, as y. So that means y has to equal 7. It's going to be half of the size of 14. Um, and then the other one, x, is going to be that times root 3. Okay, now the next one gets a little bit more involved. This is 10 over root 3 is equal to x over 1. Okay, I want you to rationalize these. And that's our x value. And then our y value is twice that big. And we're done. Okay, next one we have, um, uh, this is opposite the 30, so root 15 over 1 is equal to, what am I doing? Root 15 over 1 is equal to, oh, I forgot to label them x and y. 
what would you like? Well, let's call this X and let's call this Y just for, for grins. Um, uh, root 15 over 1 is equal to X over root 3. Multiply both sides by root 3. And I have root 45. Or what I might notice, actually, is root 15 is um, 3 times 5. And then I multiplied it by 3 so that 3 can come out. So this is 3 root 5. This is obviously a lot to do if you were just learning it for the first time, but hopefully I'm dusting off the cobwebs and helping you understand what's happening. Um, the, the y value is going to be twice as big as that root 15, so my y value is going to be 2 root 15. Or what you could say is um, oop, root 15, let me pick a new color, root 15 is to 1, uh, root 15 over 1 equals y over 2. And so then you multiply both sides by two, and you're, and we get that. Okay, um, so make sure, make sure, make sure. If you see an equilateral triangle, then you know that you can drop it in altitude and get a 30, 60, 90. Um, and what else did I want to say about that? Don't use this unless you know your angles are 30 and 60. That's the biggest mistake I see. Okay, next one, the right triangle trig, Sokotoa. So sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. So when do we use this? Either when we're looking for an angle or when we have an angle, and it's not a special right. So if it's not a 45, 45, 90, or a 30, 60, 90, then we can always use, I mean, you can always use Sokotoa with these. It's just kind of a beating. Okay, um, so this first one, I see um, this is the opposite. It's opposite the angle I care about. Here's the angle I care about. And this is the hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So we'll say sine of 42 degrees. Sometimes I'm supposed to always write the degree symbol, and many times I forget, um, is equal to x over 10. So therefore, if I multiply, I can say x is equal to 10 sine 42. That's the exact value, the approximate. I'd need to make sure my, cal my calculator is in degrees. Since they gave this to me in degrees, I have to put it in degrees. So with my um, calculator, we're going to set up, which is second menu. And then I come down, oh, I'm already in degrees. That's great. OK, so 10 sine 42. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but it's approximately 6.691. Um, Exact, that's the exact. So when I say give me the exact value, that's what I mean. This is the approximate. Um, next one. Okay, so here's the angle I care about right here. Um, so what we'll do is we'll say, okay, this one is adjacent. Well, this one's the hypotenuse, and then therefore this has to be the adjacent. So that's adjacent over hypotenuse happens to be cosine. So we'll say cosine of 31 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And notice, okay, well, I'll keep going, and then I'll tell you what I did on purpose in a second. I multiply both sides by x, and then I divide by cosine of 31, and I get x is equal to 11 divided by cosine of 31. That's the exact value. 11 divided by cosine of 31 in my calculator. You can't see what I'm doing, but, I, but trust me, it's approximately 12.833. Okay? Then the next one is... Um, Here's the angle, there's the angle we care This is opposite the angle we care about, and this is adjacent. Notice we don't have the hypotenuse. So opposite over adjacent is tangent. So we'll say tangent of x is equal to 6 over 17. 6, 17 is my birthday. I did that on purpose, and it's Trey's birthday. So file that away. You should all know that. Um, OK, so what I have to do with this one is I have to undo the tangent. So when I use my calculator, I have to hit second tangent. So we'll say. The exact value is this. And so then you hit second. And we're going to talk more about inverse tangent and all that kind of stuff later, but I would expect that you already know how to do this from geometry. And so I found that x is approximately 19.440 degrees. OK, so what I did on purpose here is I picked a sine, a cosine, and a tangent, and then I put my variable in different places. I put it as the angle, I put it on top of the fraction, and I put it at the bottom. So hopefully that'll give you an idea of how those different things work. All right, go practice. Make sure that you're an expert at this. I expect you to be an expert very soon. All right, good luck.